the screen is yours. Thank you very much. I'm Sophia. I'm from the University of Siegen. And uh, yes, this is a joint work with um, my supervisor, Alfred Güne, and uh, Chengji Zhang and Ali Azadian. And yes, so today I would like to talk a little bit about entanglement witnesses from the Schmidt decomposition and operator space. Um, so first, let me quickly give you the outline. So um, first, I will quickly um, give a rem reminder on what is entanglement and how can we detect it. Then I will shortly speak about the um, motivation um, with respect to experiments. Um, then I will actually introduce our scheme of um, entanglement witnesses that are based on the operator Schmidt decomposition. And I will show you how to construct Schmidt witnesses, multipartite witnesses. And um, lastly, I will show you how we optimized um, some given witnesses and give you some results. So first we have a um, quick repetition of entanglement. So um, any uh, quantum state that can be written in this form. So as a convex combination of uh, product states, it is called separable and all states that we can't write in this form are called entangled. So if we have the state space, then um, this orange area here denotes a separable state and all other uh, states are entangled. Um, then how can, we, uh, how can we detect entanglement? So one very useful criterion is the PPT criterion, where PPT means uh, positive partial transpose. So um, yeah, what is a positive partial transpose? So if we have some quantum state rho and we uh, make the transposition with respect to Alice's or Bob's system, and then we only have positive eigenvalues, then we call the state PPT. And this we can use um, as a criterion to um, decide entanglement, which is uh, yeah, called the PPT criterion. So if rho is separable, then it is PPT. And this means that if I have, um, if I take my partial transposition, TA or TB, and then I find a negative uh, eigenvalue, then I know that the state row must be entangled. So um, another way to um, formulate this is um, uh, this PPT criterion. One can also write any state down in this form, so as a tensor representation. And this um, gives us some further uh, separability criteria. So namely, it states that if rho is separable, then the trace norm of this uh, state rho with any permutation of the indices i, j, k, l must be smaller or equal than one. And um, one can see that uh, there are actually only two inequivalent ways of um, how to permute those indices. One denotes the PPT criterion, for example, if we switch the index L and K, because then it's simply the partial transpose. And the other one, if, if, if we, for example, switch um, K and J, and this is called the CCNR criterion, which is the computable cross-norm or realignment criterion. So where this is more or less the realignment part of this criterion. And um, yes, so this uh, shows us that those two um, criteria are both for detecting entanglement, but they complement each other. Um, yes, so far so good. We are uh, considered um, bipartite systems, but we also can consider multipartite systems. So if we now not only have Alice and Bob, but also Charlie, then um, yes, or further people, but here I just restrict to the three, then we can have fully separable states, which then can be written as a convex combination of, pure, um, yeah, of Alice's, Bob's, and uh, Charlie's part. But we can also have um, biseparable states, which are convex combinations of all possible bipartitions. And all states that can't be in one of those forms are then called entangled, where we cons uh, consider two different points, um, uh, two different ways of entanglement. One is the W um, type entangled, and the other one is the GHZ type entanglement. And then we can also define entanglement witnesses. So an entanglement witness is an observable W, which is positive for all separable states and negative for at least one entangled state. So for example, in the bipartite case, those are both entanglement witnesses because they are all positive over the separable states. 
And this witness W1 would detect all states in this area here. And W2 would detect only the states in this area. And if we um, yeah, want to define them on the multipartite um, case, then we um, not only want them to be positive on the separable, but also on the biseparable states. So this would be um, an entanglement witness for multipartite entanglement. Yes, so why is it also nice for maybe an experimental, um, yeah, an experimental uh, part? So um, in principle, if we have an experiment, it's always a hard challenge to determine whether a state is entangled or not. And one can often use bell inequalities to do so. But there exist some states where don't, um, yeah, which do not violate any bell inequalities. So those you might not um, certify then. And um, one can improve this using entanglement witness since those are observables and they can always be used to detect entanglement if we have some a priori knowledge about the state that is provided. So one, uh, fam uh, so one standard example of an entanglement witness is the fidelity uh, witness, which uh, has this form here. So um, it makes use of the fact that a state that is close to an entangled state must be entangled too. So one uses the fidelity, which actually is a measure of how close is one state to another. And yeah, we define it in either this way or we can also write it via the trace. And if we then write down this witness, it would detect all states that exceeds a certain threshold alpha here. And then we may wonder how small can we choose our alpha such that this is still a witness, meaning that this is still positive on all separable states. And uh, it turns out that when we maximize the fidelity or this expectation value over all separable states rho, then uh, this is maximized by S1 squared, where the S1 is the largest Schmidt coefficient of um, this uh, vector psi. Um, just as a reminder, the Schmidt decomposition is um, you can write any vector state psi. Can you decompose in such a form where those are autonormal vectors and the SI are positive, uh, yes, positive coefficients and they, they're not, um, their square sum up to one. One can also write down the fidelity witness in the multipartite case. Here, one has to then maximize with respect to all biseparable states, as we now want it to be our witness positive all over here. And this turns out that we get again this S1 squared, but with respect to all possible bipartitions. So we consider each bipartition, and then the um, largest S1 is our, um, yeah, our coefficient alpha. I, yeah, I wrote down a few examples. One is, um, for example, if our target state psi is the GHZ state, which yeah, looks like this, then the witness would look like this. So this factor is one over two. And for the W state, this is uh, two over three. And yeah, for example, the witness would look like this. And also, if we consider again from the experimental side, one can uh, decompose this observable W in such a form that we have simply a sum of um, PVMs. So it's nice to measure it. And yeah, so we can more or less easily implement it in an experiment. There's also another way to, um, yeah, to define with, uh, or another type of witnesses, namely, for example, GHZ witnesses. So those are then observables that are not only positive on all biseparable states, but also on the W entangled states. So if we get a negative expectation value for this W GHZ, we know that our state must be um, GHZ type entangled. And yeah, if we consider again this for the GHZ witness itself, then we get that the threshold is three over four. And yeah, what we are going to do now, because this was just some um, repetition stuff, now I'm going to show you how we can generalize those fidelity witnesses using the Schmidt decomposition in the operator space. And for this, I'd first like to give you the main idea. So the operator Schmidt decomposition 
is um, yeah, can be written like this. So any operator x, we can decompose in this way, where the mu i are now called operator Schmidt coefficients, and they are just positive coefficients. And the GIA and GIB are some autonormal operators. For example, they can be Pauli matrices or Gaiman matrices. And then one can also, uh, yeah, again, uh, write down the first result. So the operator Schmidt decomposition witness, which I just called OSD witness, is given by mu1 identity minus x. And uh, mu1 is now the largest operator Schmidt coefficient of the operator x. And one can show that this mu1 is always larger or equal. The so the expectation value of x and rho were maximized over all separable states. So this is why we can show that this is actually a witness. So as I mentioned before, this is a generalization of the fidelity witness. So I would like to show you why. Um, first, um, we consider again some pure state psi in its Schmidt decomposition in the vector space. This has uh, Schmidt coefficients si. If we now consider some projector x, we can just uh, yeah interpret as the operator x we had before and just decompose it in the operator Schmidt um, decomposition. And then we find that the operator Schmidt coefficients mu i are simply the, given by the products of the vector Schmidt uh, coefficients s, j, and s, k. And this uh, yeah, leads then to the following. So the largest operator Schmidt coefficient mu i is then given by the largest vector Schmidt coefficient squared. And this shows that um, the fidelity witness is actually a special case of the OSD witness, since if we choose our um, yeah, this uh, projector psi to be x, then this s1 squared will become the mu1, and this is simply our OSD witness. Then, so why is it actually better or stronger than the fidelity witness? For this, I just put as a reminder the CSNR criterion again, and also the definition of the operator Schmidt um, decomposition. Because one can also formulate the CCNR criterion in a different way. So um, yes, we can also say rho is separable, or if rho is separable, then the sum of all operator Schmidt coefficients of rho is smaller or equal one. So this is um, the same criterion as above, and this is more or less the um, computation cross norm part of it. And um, yes, using this definition. One can also write down CCNR witnesses, which look like this. So yes, this is simply this criterion written as a witness. And if one yeah, looks a little bit, then we see that this is also just a special case of our um, OSD witness, because if we would choose every um, new, uh, yeah, every operator Schmidt coefficient equal here, then this would simply reduce to the CCNR witness. And so this is why, because as I mentioned before, the both criteria complement each other and the OSD witness is a special, um, yeah, both are a special case of the OSD witness. We know that this is strictly stronger than the fidelity witness. So now that we have introduced this scheme, one can do some other nice stuff with it. For example, you can, um, yeah, you can uh, detect the dimensionality of entanglement where uh, we have the Schmidt rank, which is uh, the number of um, non-zero Schmidt coefficients in the vector Schmidt decomposition. And if we not only have some vector states, but density matrices, then we consider the Schmidt number, which is uh, yeah, denoted by k here. And this is um, yeah, defined as the following. If I decompose my row in such a way, then I need uh, vectors psi that have at least a Schmidt rank k. And then my row is, has Schmidt number k. So then the picture of our state space from we had in the beginning looks like this. So k equal to one are the separable states, but now we have the different dimensionalities of entanglement here. 
And then one can also analogously define uh, some witnesses called Schmidt witnesses. For example, this would be a witness that um, certifies Schmidt number three. So it has to be positive on all states with Schmidt number two or smaller. And then it yeah, would detect the states over here. And this also leads to the second result, namely the K Schmidt witnesses. So we can write it as lambda k identity minus x. And now to get the lambda k, we maximize the expectation value of x with respect to all pure states that have Schmidt number k minus one. And yeah, this gives us the lambda k. And uh, yeah, for example, for Schmidt number three, it's still nice to compute. It's simply the solution of this uh, second order polynomial. But if we go to higher Schmidt numbers, it gets a little bit, yeah, a little bit more ugly, but not complicated to compute. Okay, so the next thing I would like to tell you is how to um, use the scheme to um, detect, uh, how, uh, to construct witnesses for um, multi-particle entanglement. So as a reminder, I put again this picture of the state space here and also the definition of uh, biseparable states because we want our witness to be positive on all biseparable states. So the third result is that the OSD witness in the multipartite case is given by lambda identity minus x, where the lambda is now um, again the largest operator Schmidt coefficient mu1, but taking over all possible bipartitions. So yes, yeah, very similar to the fidelity witness. And um, yes, one can also show here that um, this lambda is always uh, bigger than the maximum expectation value rho and x taking over all um, biseparable states. So we know indeed that this is a witness. And now that I talked a lot about how do we choose this lambda when we have some arbitrary operator x, it would also be interesting to know how to choose the x because um, yeah, then we get maybe some better um, results. Yeah, and what, so what do I mean by better? I, we considered, so we optimized our witnesses with respect to the white noise robustness. So the noise robustness we define in the following way. So we have some target state row. And the question is now how much noise, or, or not how much noise, but how much of my actual state do I need such that the state eta, which is then yeah, mixed with some noise, is still detected? And yeah, one can also write this um, white noise robustness as this form here. And, and uh, considering the picture, we um, would have that, for example, this witness W1 has a smaller p than the witness um, W2, because this only detects um, those states and those states are only detected by W1. And yes, so now I will give you a short um, example how we optimize those witnesses for choosing um, the white noise robustness. So the um, stigma separable simply reduces to the white noise. So I left the normalization here. And also here, we use as an example the W state. And yes, then the optimization algorithm is the following. We start actually with the fidelity witness. So X is equal to um, the projector of the W state, which gives us the white noise robustness of 0 0.62. Then in the next step, we um, decompose this with respect to the critical bipartition. And with the critical bipartition, I mean this bipartition where our largest Schmidt, Schmidt coefficient is actually the greatest. So yes, we choose this one um, by partition. And I, I, yeah, I call this um, GA and this GB, but this can also then contain um, Bob and Charlie and this is Alice's part, for example. In the next step, we then perform an update on the operator Schmidt coefficients eta. Um, yeah, with respect to the um, gradient descent. So we compute the gradient of this P grid and make an update on all eta. And then we can iterate this um, for several steps and already get a better result. 
But then we, so far we only changed this and we don't know really how shall we change the operators, GA, uh, yeah, GI and GB. And for this, yeah, we perform this update. So yeah, it looks a little bit ugly, but the, um, the main idea is simply that we make a rotation on, on G, uh, yeah, GA or GB and uh, perform against gradient descent in order to get um, the right direction or so the best direction we can rotate it. And after all these updates, we find some, um, yeah, um, right noise robustness, which is improved because we get uh, 0 0.556. Oh, and this, um, are there a question? Yes. Uh, could you please explain once again uh, on the previous slide that you made? The previous slide? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. With um, the procedure. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no right. I didn't want I didn't <laughs> want to finish the talk. <laughs> 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 sorry. So here, uh, uh, could you please repeat uh, what was this decomposition with respect to critical bipartition? Because how you start in the previous point, X is just a projector on the W. So X itself has nothing in, of noise in it. Or So what, what is this critical bipartition of X and how does it different, how is it different from a uh, normal Schmidt decomposition of X as an operator? Um, I know it's, it's not different from the normal one. So um, yes, you take simply this um, projector, which is some metrics, and then um, yeah, you have to. Um, so I do I do a normal sheet composition for X as an operator, right? Yes, but uh, you don't take X as it is here, but you previously. So you either you um, yes you put in the GA you put for example Alice's part. And in the GB, you put Bob's and Charlie's part together. This would be the first uh, decomposition. Then you compute the same by taking Charlie's part here and Alice's and Bob's part here. And the last one where you put yeah, Bob's part here and Alice's and Charlie's part here. And then you take the, this one possibility where this uh, eta one is the biggest one. Okay, got it. So I have uh, three bipartitions and I choose uh, the absolute maximum of uh, Schmidt coefficients with respect to all those three bipartitions. Yes. Exactly. Another, another question, if I may, uh, in this update scheme, the, the bullet before the last, uh, what is this uh, Xi D? Um, yeah, here I, um, I put together some um, other. Uh, yeah, it's a bigger expression and I put everything together. So it is, um, in principle, it is the um, some generator because we put some, make a infinitesimal small um, rotation. And also there oh, okay, is- okay, 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 got it, got it, okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, any further questions? Me, I'm done. <laughs> okay, make it. Bigger again. So yes, we did it for some um, yes, some further states, not only the um, W3 state. And one can see that, um, for example, for the hypercraft state, the, the four qubit singlet state, and also for the four qubit symmetric thicker state, that the improvement went quite well. So the blue dots are the um, white noise robustnesses for the fidelity witness. The red ones are our OSD witness, which we find after the optimization. And uh, the green dots are given by um, take, uh, considering PPT mixtures, which was um, yeah, done in this paper. So I took the optimal values from this and to compare it. So we can see that we improved it quite well, but still it is not um, as good as the PPT mixtures. And yes, this is also, uh, yeah, almost the end. So maybe some open questions. 
So first, we are wondering what, um, yeah, what uh, states are detected by our witness, because in the bipartite case, we know that the witness is it detects um, states that, um, yeah, that uh, violate the CCNR criterion and the fidelity, uh, and are detected at the PPG criterion. But in the multipartite case, we don't know so much. And also, um, how does our X look like analytically? So we perform some numerical optimization, but we don't know how does it analytically look like, at least not in the multipartite case. In the bipartite case, we found out that it, the best X we can choose is um, simply by exactly the CCNI criteria, but in the multipartite case, it's not that clear. And lastly, it would be maybe interesting to um, know whether we can um, yeah, have some entanglement measures with the witness. And then lastly, I'd like to quickly sum uh, summarize. So um, yeah, we saw that we can write down entanglement witnesses using the Schmidt uh, decomposition and operator space, which uh, yeah, look like this, mu1 identity minus x. We can also use it to construct Schmidt witnesses, which has the same structure, but the lambda k is now yeah, found by maximizing with respect to the um, uh, pure states with Schmidt number k minus one. And we can also generalize this to the multipartite case. So um, yeah, we will simply have to consider all possible bipartitions and then take the largest one. And lastly, we also saw that um, we can improve um, the fidelity witness with some gradient descent methods. So, and with this, I'd like to thank you. And um, yeah, maybe you have some further questions. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Sophia, I have a question. Uh, in the last uh, in the last slide. Where you showed that the OST is improved. At this one? Yeah, that, that is like, yeah, but is it still far from the PPT? Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any advantage in using the OST compared to the PPT? Um, I think the, the advantage, so it, the advantage is that this um, state then detects. Um, yeah, other states in the PPT because there are some states. Uh, so, for example, some PPT states, uh, so states with positive partial transposed, are not detected by um, the PPT mixture, but uh, may be detected by the OSD witness. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, can I have a question? Mm -hmm. So, uh, related to the Ashandri's question, so uh, does this uh, method detect uh, like bounded entanglement? So I think like uh, PPD state uh, PPD method like cannot detect uh, like bounded entanglement. I, I'm I'm not I I don't know like much in this field, but so this um, like OSD like method can detect uh, such an bounded entanglement, I guess. Or not, I, yeah. Uh, so you mean whether this um, OSD witness detects bound entanglement? Like, no, um, um, like PPT, like in my un understanding, um, so I, I don't know much uh, about this field, but um, like PPT method cannot like detect bounded uh, bound entanglement. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard that, but um, so do these um, like always the method can detect uh, such bounded entanglement? Um, so, for example, this um, unextendable product phase state, which um, is not detected by the PPT criterion. Uh, this is detected by the um, OSD witness. Oh yeah, but um, so this 
So, Masaya, if you were asking about PPT detection, she just, I think, answered that uh, you can detect, uh, at least there is one example of a, uh, a bound entangled state that you can detect with this uh, OSD weakness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was that. Uh, and uh, did, did you say that it's for any UPB that you can construct a weakness, or you have some specific UPB for which you have a weakness? Uh, sorry, I didn't understand everything. Uh, sorry. So you mentioned you mentioned that uh, you can detect with your OSD weakness that you can detect some. Uh, a um, bound entangled state which is constructed from UPB, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So is it universal? So if I give you any UPB, you will construct a witness or you have this witness for a specific UPB? Um, mm -hmm. I didn't check it, so. Um, but you have at least one example, right? Yes, yes. And what UPB is that? In which dimensions? Um, Out of curiosity, if you remember, of course. I, so I think it was this uh, standard example. But I, at the moment, I don't have it in mind. You have it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I have a question about measure, measure, measurability. Uh, at, at the beginning, you mentioned that uh, the standard witness can be sometimes like des described as the sum of uh, PDM. Uh, does something like this also hold for the optimized witness? Or um, so we haven't uh, considered it yet. Okay. But, yeah. I would be nice. So, uh, so I would have a couple of questions. So the first one would be a follow-up question to what Jarek was saying. So do you know, because I was always thinking that the, the bound entangled states that come from the unextended group product basis are not genuinely entangled. And I think that you wanted to, so your method is to create entanglement witnesses that detect genuine entanglement, right? Uh, yes. So, so do, do you know examples of unacceptable product bases that give rise to generally entangled states? Um, and no, so. Well, oh, could okay, you so maybe repeat the question? Maybe? Uh, so, well, I was thinking that like, I was, I was thinking that like all bound entangled states that, that are constructed from an extendable product bases are not generally entangled. So okay. this would contradict what you were saying that your witness could detect such uh, entanglement. Um, but it is it is it is your hands. It is not. Okay. It's not no no. But I was kind of like no, no. I, I don't know any example of UPB that generates uh, genuine entanglement. But okay, this was just a comment. So I would have another question concerning your the questions that you posed on the last last but one slide. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which states are detected by the witness? So you. I guess you mean all witnesses that are constructed from operators in, in the in in the the way you presented on your slides. You know that you take mm -hmm. the identity. So isn't it that like every witness can be written like this? I mean, it can always be written as a uh, identity with some parameter minus some other operator. Um, yes, but uh, you need to, so yes, you can write a witness in this form. But it's not necessarily that you can actually detect the state. So, for example, we know that the fidelity witness, which is yes, the special case of the OSD witness, that this only um, detects states that violate the PPT criterion. Yeah, okay, but but the question is, which states are detected by the witness? So, like, if I take a state that is entangled, I know that there exists a witness detecting that state. Yes. But now I can always decompose that witness in terms of one minus something else. So in principle, I can always construct a, a witness that is of this form for any entangled state. Uh, yes, so but there must be, so there must be some condition on, on that witness that. Uh... Yes. So in in this um, 
So I mean, the, the, this OSD witness we considered and there you only have, so yes, you have your X and this you have to decompose in the mm -hmm. operator Schmidt decomposition and the operator Schmidt decomposition is unique. So, um, and then if you take the largest operator Schmidt coefficient, then it yeah, might be that there are some states that um, where the expectation value simply is not negative. You're saying that there are separable states for which the expectation value is not negative? No, this, this cannot be, no, because it's a witness in the end. Um, yes, uh, the witness has to fulfill that it is positive on all separable states. The witness is not negative. That's right. Yeah. That's That's the definition of witness. Well, okay, so I guess that uh, I mean not every witness can be decomposed in this way, no? So is, is the yes, yes. Okay, or it okay. might look different differently. Mm -hmm. So I would have another question concerning the the uh, the way of uh, how you optimize the the witnesses. Mm -hmm. So there was this paper by Maciej Klevenstein in two thousand, published in two thousand or something, where they also introduced a way of optimizing entanglement witnesses. So have you tried to compare both methods? Um, I probably, so which paper is it? It's the one that introduces the notion of uh, optimal entanglement witnesses. Um, I'm not sure if I know it, sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, I actually asked Otfried about it. Uh, you, okay. uh, when, when you are presenting in, uh, in Benasca, uh, the point is that this is a different uh, optimality than the paper there. So there, the optimality was considered that no witness contains the witness. That, that's how you define optimal witness. Mm -hmm. But here, uh, the optimality is with respect to the noise. So yeah, I understand. So that's why I'm asking whether they have compared like both methods of Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm just explaining what the, the paper is and by the way. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, in any case, I, I would expect that if you use the other method, then you would get like better witnesses, no? Because they, they are like optimal in the optimal sense, in the sense that I mean, you, you cannot do anything about the witness to, to make it better. But here, I guess that even if you optimize it, like you using your algorithm, the the, wit the resulting witness can still be optimized mm -hmm. by the other method and can still be improved in principle. Yes, um, maybe just have to think about it. Because actually, we don't know if that's really optimal yet. So, yeah, we also want to try some further methods. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, I think we can uh, end the session, or do we have any more questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you, Sophia. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.